Hey everybody, welcome to The Trench. My name is Christian, and today we're gonna to talk about living for others. Last week, we talked about how God has created us as particular persons with particular gifts, but we also talked about how with these gifts, there is a call to serve God on the one hand, and a temptation to serve ourselves on the other. It is essential that as we look at our lives for what they are, as we seek to see ourselves clearly, that we understand that God has created us to live for others. God has made us to give ourselves in love for the life of the world. In St. John's Gospel, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here we see that God sends Jesus into the world for the sake of the world, to give himself away in order that the world might live. And we, who have been united to God's Son in baptism, are also sent into the world with his power and love filling us to do the same. Indeed, by God's grace, we are called to be Christians, little Christs, people who live not for ourselves, but for others. When Christ went to the cross, he not only demonstrated that our lives are to be lived for others, but he also opened the path for us to do the same by calling each of us to follow him and to take up the cross ourselves. God's plan in sending Christ to be incarnate, to live and die as one of us, is that death wouldn't overtake him, but that Christ would fill death with himself and destroy it in order that he might bring forth life from death. By sharing our plight in death, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, brought forth life from the grave. This was the mission of God in Christ, and it is the same mission that God invites us to participate in today. Indeed, it is this very way of being that the saints embody for us, using their lives not to bring glory to themselves, but laying them down for the life of the world. Looking at the saints, we can indeed see that they were living sacrifices, people who understood that their lives were for the sake of those around them, as God worked to bring forth life from places of death. Saint Pantalaemon is the perfect example of this. Born to a Christian mother and a pagan father, he was given the name Pantaleon, or in all things like a lion. After his mother died, his father sent him away to study medicine in Nicomedia. He was so skilled as a doctor that the Emperor Maximian wanted to hire him as the royal doctor. Through the friendship of a priest, however, Pantaleon became a Christian. At his baptism, he took the name Pantalaemon, or the All-Merciful. Then, instead of using his medical expertise to pursue a super successful career as the royal doctor, Pantalaemon spent the rest of his life serving the sick and the suffering, practicing medicine without charge, healing prisoners in the name of Christ. But when the patients of the other physicians also began visiting Pantalaemon, who would heal them free of charge, the other doctors became envious of him, and they reported him to Emperor Maximian, saying that he was healing prisoners illegally. In order to prove his co-working with Christ, Pantalaemon healed a paralyzed man in the name of Jesus. The healed man, however, was promptly killed, and Pantalaemon was also sentenced to death for his service to Christ. Pantalaemon is one of my favorite saints of all time. Anyone who knows me knows that I have a kind of weird obsession with the martyrs and a somewhat disturbing preoccupation with death. But it's not just for these reasons that I love him. Rather, Pantalaemon embodies for us the call of Christians to give their lives in service to God's mission in the world, in service to God's plan to bring forth life from death. Pantalaemon gave his life, both daily and ultimately, in order to bear witness to the reality that Christ is always working to bring forth new life from places of death. Rather than doing what most of us would do and using his natural abilities to secure a successful and well-paying career as a royal doctor, Pantalaemon actually took a minute and looked outside of himself. He saw that he was surrounded by the poor, by the sick, by the suffering, and he decided that he was going to use his natural abilities to serve them instead of himself. He laid down his life for the life of the world. For those of us in the 21st century, St. Pantalaemon doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We may feel that we need to use our talents in order to cultivate a really good life for ourselves, to make a lot of money so that we can support a family that we may or may not have in the future. But St. Pantalaemon shows us that the way forward is to understand that our gifts belong to God, and they are to be used for the life of the world. We are called to enter places of suffering, of darkness, of death, and to fill them with the light and the life of Christ. Unfortunately, this way of being, this way of entering death, or rather finding life in death, 
is something that scares us, and we tend to run away from it by trying to secure valuable lives for ourselves. We are so self-obsessed. We are constantly preoccupied with our own lives and futures, our own fears and failings, our own wants and desires. We are held captive by the prison of ourselves. But if we are going to serve the Lord, we need to understand that Christ has called us to give ourselves away, to live not for ourselves, but for others. And next week, we're going to see that living life for others is something that we can only truly do if we are continually practicing putting ourselves aside by practicing life in death. So join the fight, live orthodoxy, remember to like and subscribe, and join the rest of us inside the trench.